Hello. For our presentation, we worked on wildfire risk prediction modeling. Due to climate change, wildfires are predicted to increase in frequency and severity within the next couple of years. Due to this, there has been increased AI research within the realm of wildfires. For example, Stanford University has developed a model to show how wildfires in one area will affect air quality across the globe. Our dataset contains several images of areas affected by wildfires and areas that are not impacted by wildfires. The images in our dataset also contain various features such as streets, buildings, forests, and lakes. Wildfires are becoming a large issue around the globe. They have affected 6.2 million people and caused 2,400 deaths from 1998 to 2017 and will only be increasing in the next couple of years due to the increased prediction in frequency. Exposure to wildfires can ruin community infrastructure, release dangerous levels of air pollutants, and result in millions of dollars of financial losses. Previous forest fires can impact the probability and severity of future forest fires in the same region, as studies have shown. An accurate prediction of wildfires can help communities evacuate earlier and increase intervention response speed. This would prevent large wildfires from spreading even further and impacting more communities. Machine learning can help classify satellite images to predict areas that are at risk for wildfires. CNNs are a deep learning algorithm that learn hierarchical representations of image data, making them suited to image classification tasks. Our CNN model uses four convolutional and max pooling layers with kernel sizes of 3x3 and 2x2 respectively, and 16, 32, 64, and 128 filters in each convolutional layer. The output is flattened and passed to two fully connected layers using sigmoid activation to produce a single neuron output with a probability between 0 and 1 that the image is a wildfire. The chosen architecture reduces trainable parameters significantly while maintaining high accuracy for binary image classification and wildfire detection. We downloaded over 40,000 aerial images from the Canadian Forest Inventory Department, falling almost evenly into two classes, wildfire and no wildfire. Images were already separated into training, validation, and testing folders. Because the training dataset includes over 30,350 by 350 pixel color images, we had to perform dimensionality reduction via PCI. We used PCI to determine the number of principal components necessary to maintain enough variance in the data for high testing accuracy. We performed PCI on a random sample of 100 training images from both classes, and then split the image into three RGB channels and applied PCI iteratively to each channel. The image shows an example of the progression of image compression from 25 principal components to 350 principal components. As you can see, the more dimensions there are, the clearer the image becomes. We averaged results from the random sample of images to determine the optimal image size. The top image shows the average number of dimensions required to maintain different levels of variance from 95% to 99.99%. We trained the CNN model with images compressed to each of the sizes shown on the bar chart. Training became too computationally expensive when we compressed the images to 131 by 131 pixels and above, which maintained 99% variance and above. Though images with 89 dimensions is the highest testing accuracy, training that model took significantly longer. Therefore, the optimal number of principal components is 78, which maintains an average of 96% variance. We decided to move forward with images compressed to 78 by 78 pixels. In order to increase the effectiveness of our classification model, we decided to fine-tune its hyperparameters. Because of the very computationally expensive nature of training our model, we decided to uh, tune the parameters one by one rather than testing every single combination of them. Uh, this is kind of a naive way of cross-validating the, the parameters, but as we'll see, it still allows us to achieve a very effective model. First, we isolated the batch size on a model taking in 78 by 78 input images and training each, each different uh, model for 30 epics. As we can see from the plot on the right, a batch size of 64 res resulted in the highest testing accuracy, and so we decided to keep a batch size of 64. Next, we decided to tune the learning rate of the optimizer in our model. We tested five different learning rates for models taking in 78 by 78 input images, batch size of 64, and trained each for 30 epics once again. As we can see from the plot, a learning rate of 5 times 10 to the negative fourth resulted in the highest testing accuracy. Over the past three slides, you can see that we essentially trained 14 different models in order to arrive at our final model. 
With each model having total training times between about 90 to 120 minutes, the total time we spent training the different models to arrive at our final one was roughly 21 to 27 hours. The hyperparameters for our final model are also shown on this slide. Now looking at our best model with a learning rate of 0 0.0005, the batch size of 64, 30 epics, and an input image size of 78 by 78, you see a test testing accuracy of 97.34% after the 30th epic, a testing loss of 0 0.0745 after the 30th, 30th epic, and a train time of approximately three minutes per epic. Based on the plots, you can see that there's a little bit of fluctuation as the epics progress, but because the the loss and the loss is low and the accuracy is high, respectively, uh, throughout these epics, it, that fluctuation uh, and modulation is not too much of a cause for concern in this case. Let's take a look at the final model confusion matrix just to get an alternate perspective on how our model performed. So it predicted no wildfire correctly 97.4% of the time, and it predicted the wildfire correctly 97.2% of the time. As we can see, both of those, that top left corner and the bottom left and the bottom right corner, uh, don't have too large of a discrepancy between them, so the model wasn't biased to predict one over the other. Um, and same with that bottom left versus that top right corner. 94 versus 73 is pretty minimal difference. So as we can see, the model wasn't biased towards predicting one over the other, uh, and it was pr predominantly accurate. In conclusion, we were able to create a model that effectively and accurately can predict whether a satellite image contains an area that has previously been, been affected by wildfires. Our model in the future can be used to identify areas that are more, more prone to wildfires. Over the course of creating this project, we all learned a lot about how convolutional neural networks work and how they are able to identify key features and images that even humans can't.